The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live in studio, waiting to take your calls on anything that you'd like to talk about to your health. Give me a call at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Perhaps you've had a problem and you've been looking all the wrong places. Well, here's the opportunity. This is the right place. This is the place that you call to find out what's going on that you can do differently, you know, without kind of pharmaceuticals and drugs there's other ways there's things that you can do to make a huge difference and how you feel increase your lifespan and but more importantly the quality you know be able to do the things that you like to do yeah, this is the place so give me a call you know for over four decades i've dedicated everything that i do to making sure that you have the information that you need to apply it properly to be able to help you in, in any way that we can uh, as you go back into my history and you start looking at the things that we've created, things that we've done for you, uh, including the book that I wrote uh, about four or five years ago now, five years ago, Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program, still available, by the way. You can get that online. You can call the office, uh, 703-698-7117. We have it. And you can uh, just you know go to our website. It's available there as well. But more importantly, you know our Ageless Health programs and our in-house continuing education programs and the group of amazing practitioners that we have working together in an integrative format to be able to look at you multidimensionally. And that's the piece that's more important than anything else. It's the multidimensional look at how health and wellness and come about and often are lost. So when you're at that place where you're not feeling good, you are told you have X, Y, Z symptom or disease or dysfunction and your body's starting to not do what it used to do, there is a why. There's a why behind that. And what I want to do today, you know, and a lot of my programs are triggered based on things that have happened during the week with my patients, things that they've asked me about. And I want to become a coach today. I want to put you in a position that you can start thinking through things on your own. And it's critical that you have an understanding. We're going to talk a little bit about the brain. If we get a little time, we're going to talk about the heart. We'll probably start out with that today, actually. And we're going to talk a little bit about that HPA axis, that hypothalamus pituitary adrenal. Wow, that's a whole bunch of words. And we're going to see if we can put some light on the subject for you. But more importantly, let's let's start out with this thing that's about the size of your fist in the middle of your chest it's called your heart and the heart is an organ system that we give a lot of respect to because without its capacity to function at very high levels we're not going to be here right it, it stops we do it doesn't uh, work then our life is not as good as it should be matter of fact we're without it and so we have to understand that it has to have certain nutrient bases and it has to have certain electrical inputs and it has to have a certain energetic, if you will, that allows it to work synchronously in harmony with the rest of our body. Everybody is scrambling. You go to your doctors and he says, well, what do you expect for your age? And then they put you on a statin and an aspirin and say, you know, this is preventative. This is standard of care. You've heard me talk about that before when it's come to people that I've talked to personally. So the bottom line is, is that we have to respect its capacity. Here's this, this fist size organ in the middle of your chest that is dependent on many, many patterns. And it has electrical sources. It's called your nervous system, but it actually has four, three directly, but four neurological applications that allow it to work. It's got that old friend of ours, the vagus nerve, the wanderer, that goes from the brain. It's the 10th cranial nerve, and it goes directly to all the organ systems, but specifically the heart. It has nerves from the spinal column, and they go directly to the heart. It has its intrinsic electrical source. They're called pacemakers, the regulating pace setters, if you will, of heart contraction and so forth. And then there's this little nerve that is a combination of a couple other nerves that come from the neck, 
portion of the spine, your cervical spine, and it's called the phrenic nerve. Now, it doesn't go directly to the heart muscle, but authors are saying that it goes to the covering around the heart called the pericardium. And if the pericardium isn't functioning, isn't protective, isn't helping stimulate the electrical responses of the heart, then the heart begins to misfire. So instead of just thinking that the heart beats on its own and we have to influence it directly, we need to start thinking about the why behind it. What's really going on with this pump, this fist-sized organ that sits in the middle of your chest that really is responsible for keeping you present? And so we have this sensory feedback mechanism and also uh, productive vagus nerve. We have the pacemakers. We have the phrenic nerve. We have the nerves from the spine. And this heart is dependent on that, but it's not solely dependent on those things. There are other things as well. Do you really think that this fist size organ in the middle of your chest can pump the blood throughout your entire body without any assistance or help anyplace else? Not so much. Think about it mechanically. It doesn't work that way. It is the initiator. It's the prime mover. But all the arterial, these, you know, vessels that go through that carry blood away from the heart, they have muscular contraction as well, and they have neurological influences, and they have other things that work as well. But we also look at inflammatory reactions, inflammation. You remember that acid that I keep telling you, inflammation is acid? Well, in, in most situations, if we're, our level of inflammatory reactions are way too high, then the body can't function, and particularly with the heart, it begins to eat itself up, if you will, and that's where a lot of the placking comes. Placking comes as a result of your body's attempt to try to protect you. Isn't that interesting? It tries to protect you. So what does this got to do with anything? Well, it has to do with a lot of questions I've had recently, and everybody's asking the question about this nitric oxide stuff that's out there. You know, nitric oxide stimulation is necessary for all the 50 trillion cells that communicate within your body from one point to the other. And if you don't have enough nitric oxide, this is a molecule, by the way, that your, your body produces, and it should be there. But sometimes, for a lot of reasons, it stops producing it. And then when that happens... It, uh, we begin to see a lot of things happen, like your memory kind of shuts down, doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Uh, your heart definitely doesn't work. Your immune system and its ability to fight bacteria and tumors begins to break down. Remember, lock onto that word that I just said, tumors, because that's one of the problems. Regulate blood pressure. And it opens up your arteries. It makes blood flow easier. Guys, that's why you're going out and you're buying arginine. And if you want to be in the natural world, and I'll, uh, leucine, if you want to be in the natural world, or you're going to go to Cialis and you go to Viagra because they are nitric oxide stimulators. Unfortunately, the drug component has side effects. So it reduces the inflammation. So the body doesn't eat itself up. It improves your ability to sleep. It increases your sensory recognitions, particularly by the way of smell. If you lose your smell, one of the reasons can be simply because you don't have enough nitric oxide stimulation, and there's a lot of different pathways that are associated with that. It will dramatically increase your strength and your endurance, and it also helps your gut and many other things. We could go on and on and on. But, you know, the thing of it is, is there's been huge studies in the area of nit nitric oxide application with uh, within the last 20-plus years. Um, I went through and I did a literature search this week, kind of thinking about this because it's something that was asked. And I, uh, two different sites said there was like 60,000 studies that were done on nitric oxide application. Well, that's a lot of science behind this. Uh, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was given to three scientists that discovered the signaling capacity, if you will, the role of nitric oxide to communicate with all these other cells. So let's get it straight. There is a real need to be able to produce nitric oxide naturally within the body and to be able to use it interventionally, if you will, uh, if it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing, but then turn the system around. This this guy, this uh, Nobel Prize uh you know, founder was a guy by the name of Alfred Nobel, right? Going back many, many, many moons ago, like a hundred years ago. And the reason it came about was the prescription of something called nitroglycerin. It's that thing that when people get angina and chest pain and you feel like your chest is crushing, that's why you got the, no that's where the Nobel Prize came about. So this chemical helped this heart condition, right? This 
angina pain, this heart pain. Now, there's different other things that they use today. And niacin, by the way, works a whole lot better than nitric oxide, but we can talk about that at a different time. So when you look at the the levels of production of this nitric oxide, you start getting into the interstitial levels, the the first area of tissue and how it responds. And then we can take that to how the body works with you know, its ability to continue to produce pathways that allow blood flow and need blood flow and encourage the optimization of blood, blood flow. And big business has jumped onto this, and but the problem is, like everything else, there's a problem. L-citrulline and arginine together uh, produce a cyclic pattern that create nitric oxide, and that nitric oxide opens up and stimulates other things. Now, if you add that with other nutrients like CoQ10, vitamin E, vitamin C, um, alpha lipoic acid, you know, you're going to produce much more nitric oxide, and there's ways of putting those things together, but they have to be put together in the right combinations. So let's get into this nitric oxide pattern just a little bit more because we want to make sure that we understand that it is necessary for you to survive optimally and make sure that you have good heart and brain function and everything else works consistently. So what is the primary reason that nitric oxide begins to break down. It's because of our lifestyles. It's because of the things that happen to us. It's the injury patterns. It's the stress patterns. You know, the years ago, this goes back, I think, 19, early 90s, it was the, the American Association for the Advancement of Science proclaimed that nitric oxide was the molecule, molecule of the year. I think that's 20 years that we're talking about, 20, 30 years, right? So it has huge physiological importance and Again, we looked at the Nobel Prize application of that in those days and its relationship to so many other functions from the immune system to the nervous system to the brain and even, guys, ED, and by the way, cancer. If your nitric oxide level is low, your risk of all types of cancers increase exponentially. And so we have to understand what that's all about. So, you know, like many other components in the body, nitric oxide can really be a double-edged sword. We're going to get into that a little bit when it comes to relaxing the blood vessels and keeping them flexible and, you know, uh, allowing them to dilate properly and boosting blood, blood flow and so forth. Sounds great, right? Because all those things that we just talked about can decrease your blood pressure, make your heart work better, get rid of placking, yeah, reverse the, pro- the placking process in the body. But again, going back to what I said in the beginning of the program, we also have to embrace and take into consideration the neurological platforms and, by the way, the energy platforms, the energetic platforms. That's why it's so critical that we look at everything from a multidimensional viewpoint, that we look at things from a viewpoint of where did it initially come from, how did it start, and how can I reverse the process going back to the triggering mechanism, not just the disease, the symptom that exists today. And that's where we get in trouble with all kinds of problems is that we look at what's happening right now in front of us and say, oh my God, oh my God, I got to fix that instead of going back and asking the question, where did it come from? We're going to talk a little bit more about that and then we're going to get into some other very interesting topics. But meanwhile, call me, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Coming up to a break, don't go away. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rizal Live. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. I'm in studio. Give me a call. 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625. What a beautiful day it is outside. I hope you get out and enjoy it and take a walk or go do something fun after you listen to the program. And if you go out before that, to make sure that you take your phone with you and, you know, hop on in those in Washington area, WMAL, uh, has an app that you can put there and you can listen anywhere that you want to go. So make sure that you take care of that okay you don't want to miss any of this This is like way too much fun let's go to the phone susan thank you for holding Hello. how can i help you hello yes, yes i hope you can hear me i can hear um, you i have a question um if uh, someone is uh, diagnosed with um a blood clot in the lung is there um an alternative to a cat scan to see if it's still there or not 
Uh, no. Unfortunately, the only way that you can really tell is one of a couple of ways. You can you can do ultrasound if you specifically know where it is. You can uh, and uh, but more than anything else, depends on where it's embedded in the heart tissue itself uh, or the lung tissue. I'm sorry, in the lung tissue, you may have to uh, do a PET scan or have to do a CAT scan, you know, to find out where the clot is. You can do rotorooter work if it's in one of the main arteries, meaning that. Uh, you go in as you would from an angioplasty. Usually it's an inguinal artery, and they go up and they take a look, and today's fiber optics uh, you know, is very revealing when it comes to that. So you don't have to do the CAT scan. Uh, that is generally the normal way that it gets done. Again, it depends on where it's located and what the makeup of the tissue is. But if you're looking at the main arterial bed to find out specifically where it's located, you usually do a combination of those things. I'm not a fan. I don't like any massive intervention unless it's absolutely necessary to do so diagnostically. But you need to find out, if, particularly if it's life-threatening, particularly if it's someone who is, is being challenged. Now, the end product comes is why is that there to begin with? Most clots come about as a result of... Uh, too much acid within the system, too much inflammatory reaction that hasn't been dealt with. And that's the question that you need to go to. That's that's what, what you really need to understand when it comes to any clot, whether it's in the arterial, uh, the uh, the arteries themselves, whether it's in the lung, whether it's in the, the brain, whether it's in the heart. Uh, all of those things are important in its evaluation. Going you know to the topic that we're talking about today with nitric oxide production, uh, a reduction in nitric oxide can uh, decrease the blood flow, and it also can cause high levels of inflammatory reactions. Now, let's take it the next step, right? So if nitric oxide uh, in the tissue uh, that helps control certain types of proteins, if it's not working the way it's supposed to, the amyloid, the plaques that are the hallmark of Alzheimer's can begin to form. And But it's the same process, whether it's the, the brain, whether it's the heart, or whether it's the lung. So your nitric oxide uh, affects all the systems, immune system, it affects uh, uh, tissues. So, and remember I, I said just before we broke, there's a double-edged sword with nitric oxide. It's worthy of mentioning that uh, this double-edged sword, the nature of nitric oxide, uh, is when it's applied to certain types of cancers. Uh, a signaling molecule of nitric oxide can cause cancer cells to destroy themselves. It's, a, it's a, a process called optosis, but it can also promote the growth of blood vessels. It's called angiogenesis, which cancer needs to grow. So you got to have blood supply. So a woman who has breast cancer or any other type of cancer, for the tumor to grow, you have to have blood supply. And again, that's a process called angiogenesis. And if the nitric oxide level uh, is too high or if it's not being used properly, uh, it can be uh, either pro or anti-cancer depending on, you know, uh, the concentrations. And also, by the way, the type of tumor. Not all tumors are affected that way, but we have to be very careful. So if a woman came in, for example, and she had a, a, a highly vascularized uh, breast tumor, there's no way that we would prescribe high levels, certain levels, yes, high levels of nitric oxide. Uh, there was a recent review of the effects of nitrate consumption, which is part of this whole thing. It was uh, done in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and the research showed the beneficial effects, you know, on blood pressure and arterial stiffness and plaquing and so forth and so on. But again, we have to be careful relative to its other pathways. So uh, plant foods, in, including fruits and chocolate and red wine, provide these things called polyphenols. And uh, there are other compounds as well that can increase nitric oxide production in the body, you know, along many different pathways. Arginine is an amino acid, and it's one that we recommend, particularly for guys that are having erectile dysfunction and, you know, other things along that nature. It's 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 critical that you know, that we put things in balance, regardless of, you know, what the condition is. Not every shoe fits every foot, and it's the same thing with nutrition or neurological applications or acupuncture. It's not necessarily a broad brush across the board, but you need to take it all into consideration and apply it properly. We're coming up to a break. Don't go away.
Dr. Tom Roselle Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Roselle here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Roselle Live. I'm in studio. Call me, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Let's talk about your stuff. There's lots of things that are going on in the world of natural therapeutics. What do I mean? That means without drugs, right? That means that there's things that you can do to turn your life around to move forward instead of take this and call me, you know, in a month. Let's watch it. Watch what? You know, one of the most egregious, one of the most egregious statements that any physician ever makes is one simply, let's watch it. What in God's name are you watching? You're watching till you're dead and then we'll take some action. You're watching till the tumor becomes metastatic and then it starts eating you up and there's nothing we can do about it anyway except to try to kill you with other chemotherapeutic drugs. Are you watching it to see that, you know, oh my God, there's nothing that I can even try or, or do about it. So we'll just, you know, tell the patient we're going to watch it and see what happens. I don't know about you, but I got this headspace that says, the body was designed to heal itself. It doesn't need any help. It just doesn't need any impairment or irritation. And if you get it out of the way, the body has this amazing, amazing capacity to turn itself around. Instead of, oh, well, you got a plaque, and now you're going to have to take blood thinners the rest of your life. Or you have a abnormal heartbeat so we're going to give you things like toporol or we're going to something of that nature that is going to artificially regulate and when that doesn't work we'll put a pacemaker in or we'll do an ablation or we're going to do and the list goes on why not ask the question why it's there in the first place what happened physiologically to allow the body to break instead of your doctor saying well we really don't know what the answer is to this Medicine doesn't know. What he's telling you or she's telling you is that we're not congruent enough to ask the primary question physiologically, why did the pathology occur and let's trace it back as far as we can. And oh my God, it might be lifestyle. It might be actually something that we're doing that we need to shift. You know, we talked about nitric oxide uh, in the first half of the program and we talked about how important it is to all the 50, uh, 50 million trillion, I'm sorry, 50 trillion cells that the, that you have to allow communication from one to the other because it does work in synchrony. It's not isolated. It's not one of those things that, you know, you can set aside and just compartmentalize and treat all by itself. There's so much that is treated aberrantly in the body and you need to really understand that there is a way to reverse most everything. See, I have this crazy concept that as long as you're breathing, you have the ability to change stuff. If you decide you want to change it. And they say, well, I don't have the time. I, you know, I, you know, I, I just, I, I can't do it. You know, I can't do it because it takes you out of your comfort zone. I can't do it because you really don't understand what the progression of deterioration and subsequent death is. So let's talk about something that's spin off of that something that unfortunately billions and billions of dollars are being spent annually in the United States you know if I had my way and I could bring together a host of integrative uh, care practitioners if I could if I could teach doctors to think properly we would cut the national debt down to a fraction because then you become responsible for your own health care you actually will be educated to understand how the body works. You will have the ability to do and decide what you want to do with your life instead of being told by some white tower doctor that this is the way it needs to be. Let's talk about your joints, you know, being a, kind of an interesting topic out of joint. Well, what does that mean? That means that uh, bones and ligaments and muscles and so forth are often out of position in a way that they can cause neurological dysfunction, disturbance, leading to deterioration of, uh, of the body mechanics and its application relative to physiology. So how can docs of any kind help patients with the joints, whether it's knee joint or hip joint or uh, spinal joints? You know, suddenly you go in and you, help, you hear people wear 
these diagnoses like their their banners, right? I have stenosis. Well, I have arthritis. I have degeneration. I got to tell you something. The majority of you do anyway. How many of you are really hurting and how many of you decided that you have to hurt because you got the diagnosis? Kind of interesting, right? Think about that for a second. Am I pointing a finger? Maybe. You know, maybe. I've been at this this game over four decades. Maybe. Maybe I see people coming in and they say, well, what are you going to do about it? I have this. It's like, it's a challenge. Like, nobody can fix me, so how are you going to do it? Well, why are you in my office to begin with? You know, why did you come in, you know, just to prove that you're right and, and everybody else in the, in the world is wrong? And you're going to wear that diagnostic? I have this. Well, you're still breathing. You still have capacity. How about changing a few things? How about actually taking the time and, you know, you might become more efficient and then your brain goes in a scattered mechanism if you don't. So, you know, bone and muscle and joint pains are a fact of life for way too many people as far as I'm concerned. Spinal pain included in what we're talking about. So, again, let's go to the cause of this type of pain, and it may stem from many different components. It can be nutritional in that you're not feeding your body what you should be feeding it. The inflammatory levels go up in any type of acidic environment. Cancer grows in acidic environment. If your body is alkaline, cancer cannot exist. It dies in an alkaline environment. Just a second thought there for you a second. Right? So the diagnosis of arthritis, you know, arthritic type of problems. If you look up, you're going to see that it affects more than 55 million people. That's a hell of a note. And those are the ones that are diagnosed with it. 55 million people. Can you imagine what the compounded cost is to society of 55 million people diagnosed as arthritis? And what does it do to your head? Oh, my God, I have arthritis. Well, let me tell you a fact of life. I look at x-ray after x-ray after x-ray, and there's many people who have very advanced degenerative arthritic conditions, and there are no pain. And I have patients who have very little arthritic condition present in their spinal x-rays, and they hurt like hell. Why is that? What's the difference? Does one perpetuate and lead to the other? Maybe. But at the end of the day, it's not a carte blanche, broad brush, this is what you're going to get. Stenosis, do you really know what the name, the, the meaning of the word stenosis is? Stenosis means a narrowing of the hole that the nerve comes out of. Degeneration is just the joint space breaking down. That's also caused, that also will cause narrowing. But you have these two bones in your spine. They're called vertebrae. And in between you have a disc, a shock absorber. And they house and protect the nerve that comes out, that disc space, that shock absorber allows you to move and bend and twist. And you have gliding points on the back of the vertebrae. And when that disc begins to shrink in size, by the way, sometimes it's just simply because of dehydration, it's called a lifestyle choice. How many of you think that water's for washing and not drinking? Take a look at the disc space, the shock absorber. I'm going to give you a little, little kind of visual on this one. And if you knew that that shock absorber was 75% water, which it is, by the way, and you knew that the body triages water, meaning that the first water you drink goes into your body for survival purposes. It goes to the heart, goes to the kidney, goes to the lung, goes to other soft tissues after that. It goes to lymphatic washing, kind of get the garbage out. And then whatever happens to be less left goes to the disc and goes to the joints. So if you're not getting enough water, not only some of you don't drink much of anything, maybe a glass. I can't tell you how many patients tell me that when I interview them when they come into the, the office. But you are rapidly destroying your life. You're building up toxins, but you're dehydrating your joints. Visualize, if you will, an old sponge. One that's been sitting on your, your sink for a long time. And that sponge hasn't been in the water ever. You just forgot about it. It's just sitting there. It's underneath the cabinet. It's just sitting there. Do you know how hard and brittle that thing is? You can take it and snap it, and it'll break very easily. Now, take that old sponge. 
in many cases, that's you. And put that old sponge in a saucer that's filled with water. Just lay it in there. Don't do anything about it. Don't try to push it in. Just lay it, lie it, if you will, in the the saucer. And it begins to imbibe. It begins to suck in the water. Now, just take it and kind of flip it over. And so you get both sides. And pretty soon, that old, hard sponge that could snap in a second becomes flexible. It begins to contain and hold the water. It gets bigger and thicker. Your disk spaces will do the same thing if you get enough water. And no, coffee and tea are not water. They will actually dehydrate you even more. Yeah, I know. I'm not playing nice today. But at the end of the day, you've got to get the water in your system. Well, and you say, well, if I drink too much water, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, and so sip on it. Do a little coconut water. It'll stay in the tissue a little bit more. Add a little sea salt to your water. Sea salt will keep it in tissue better. And you won't look as shriveled up and old and decrepit as you could if you actually drank some water. But the end product is is that it's actually protecting and buffering those joint spaces. So your structural pain, that musculoskeletal pain that is coming from the nerves being pinched, by the way, if your spine is out of position, and that by itself can cause the pain and inflammation to continue, the tendons and the ligaments that are not working the way they're supposed to, the disc space that is shrinking up, causing stenotic patterns, they do all kinds of things relative to our life, right? They stop us from doing whatever. And then what, what, what we do is what? We reach for aspirin or we teach for, uh, reach for other types of anti-inflammatory painkillers without realizing that we're making the problem worse, that it increases other systems begin to fail. So the, the cause, the etiology of many of these conditions, if you will, are an interplay of many different factors, including how the body works or doesn't work relative to our own volitional application. Do we sit there? Do we up and actually try to do something? You know, our sleeping patterns, you know, how our intestinal tract works, hormonal balances, the balance of energetics, the spine not being in proper position, the lack of certain nutrients specifically, not just throwing a... Uh, kitchen sink at things. But the rate of musculoskeletal disease, by the way, is much greater. Far art strips, that of circulatory and cardiovascular and respiratory diseases, combined. Combined. So if your joint spaces aren't working, if your nervous system isn't working the way it's supposed to, how can anything else work properly? And it's often responsible for uh, chronic high blood pressure, and problems with allergy reactions, and problems with respiratory patterns, and simply because of the fact that the nervous system that is part and parcel of all these joint spaces isn't firing the way it's supposed to. But we go to these, you know, these aspirin, these NSAIDs, these group of drugs, these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and the problem that we see then, as I suggested earlier, is that it affects other systems. It affects the liver. It affects the kidneys. It affects the intestinal tract. It causes bleeding in the body. And then pretty soon they don't work, by the way. So we begin to look and tear this whole mechanism apart and begin to understand that we are ultimately the cause of a lot of the degenerative disease that we see in our joint spaces, in our knees, in our neck, in our back, and so forth. And then we say we have stenosis or we have arthritis, and there's nothing that can be done about it because who told you that? Well, your traditional allopathic physician who doesn't understand the functional medicine and integrative approach to health. And they're looking at compartmentalizing. So pretty soon you go, and I've got to have a disc spinal disc surgery or I have to have a knee replacement or I have to have my shoulder redone. And all of those things can be prevented, pre uh, providing that you're willing to take action and be the own, your own captain and learn things and understand that you can make a difference. So why don't you? Why is it that we have become a group of people 
that are unwilling to do anything that takes us outside of our comfort zone. I'm not understanding this. I don't get it. After four decades and at the Rizal Center with the docs seeing way over a million patients, we look at the body as something that we know is reversible. In the world of integration, when it comes to these problems, whether it's cardiac problems and nitric oxide pathway uh, inhibitions or joint spaces that are degenerating, there is a why to all of this. So why is it that we fail to educate ourselves and why is it that once we do and we might have a suspicion that there's something that can be done about it, that we fail to take any action to turn things around? I'm not saying, but, you know, when there's things out there in the world that you can use that are of low level financial cost to us, why wouldn't we? begin to change things around? Why is it that we don't understand that when we have exposures to things that sometimes ignored over a long period of time, we end up with the symptoms that we are so quickly willing to suppress because we don't want to put up with instead of learning what it is that we can do to reverse the condition? I encourage you, and this is why we do this program, this is why we do our in-house continuing education programs, to take advantage and do the things that you need to do. Talk to people, like the doctors at the Rizal Center, to see if something can be done to use your abilities to reverse your conditions. We're going to come back after a break and acknowledgement of some of the people that bring you Dr. Tom Rizal live and kind of wrap this together. Don't go away. 105.9 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Rizal. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rizal live as you do every Sunday at high noon. And, you know, want to encourage you to make sure that you make a commitment to yourself. You know, that you tell people about the program, but you take action on what you're hearing and what you're being taught. Because at the end of the day, it's really for you. We've dedicated ourselves to making sure you have opportunity. And we want you to know that everything is reversible, modifiable, as long as you're willing to do what's necessary to make it happen. It hurts me. It breaks my heart when I hear people unwilling to do something different than taking a drug. And not that they're not necessary, not that they're sometimes necessary, because sometimes they are. But once you get to the place of stability, now it's time to take other action and begin to reverse themselves. And when somebody tells you to take this drug for the rest of your life, that's the first clue that you need to have about five other opinions and really get to an understanding of what takes place. We talked about a lot of things today. And I want you to know, I want you to go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, rosellecare.com. And check out the website. And you're going to find that there's a tremendous amount of information there. The other programs that we've done over a period of many years, you need to go to rosellradio.com and check it out. And there's hundreds of programs there for your listening pleasure. They're all linked up to what the topic's about, and you'll hear me and other doctors as well. But go to the website, and there's a lot of very interesting data there that you can go away from and really learn. Uh, there's a video on headaches, Dr. Harlan Browning, who we call the professor, and it's sitting there, and it's an hour program. You can sit there and go through the whole thing. There's one that Dr. Pina has done, and you can go through that. You can really take advantage of all the things that we're putting out there for you. So what can you do for yourself? What can you do to make a difference? Lots on a day-to-day basis. Try exercising. It doesn't have to be a lot. Stretch. Do something. Use your health. Your athletes in your own home. You can do planks at a 30-degree angle off the wall. You can do push-ups off the wall. You can sit and stand, sit and stand. You can twist and turn and do things. Go out for a walk. Remember I've said repetitively that if you walk two miles every day, I'm not telling you how fast, but if you walk two miles every day, you decrease your risk of dying from a disease process by 50%. That's just two miles. You know, put a headset on, go listen to something, go have some fun, go think about it. You know, sleep, you have to sleep in a cool room. 
cool room and absolutely no lights whatsoever. Open the windows. Get some fresh air in, particularly when the nights sit drop down a little bit. Meditate or pray. Your choice. You do what you need to do. Compensate, you know, for that inability to sleep or that poor sleep pattern that you have. Manage your stress. It's called flossing your mind. Also get in the habit of writing a gratitude journal. Give thanks for the things that are important to you. By the way, when you do truly give thanks to something, you get more of it. Hold your breath. Learn how to breathe. Really breathe in. Your stomach needs to be moving, not your chest. And we'll talk about that at another time. Get out in the sun. Get some sunshine. Because otherwise, you know, your whole biorhythmic patterns are going to be off. Your vitamin D level is going to go down in your toenails. Be part of a community. Get involved. Eat good, rich, polyphenol types of foods. You know, what are they? They're berries and, and uh, things like uh, even dark chocolate, but unfortunately about 80% dark chocolate. Turmeric, green teas, grape seed, uh, you know, broccoli, onions, spinach, tomatoes, legumes, and eat the right kind of fats. Your omega-3s balance properly. They protect your brain and other uh, elements within your body. And feed yourself. Feed your intestinal tract. Make sure it's working properly. You have to make sure you have good bacteria and not destroy it all the time with all the garbage that we're putting into it. If you just did those things and you did them all the time, you would be surprised the quality index of your health would rise exponentially. I do this program for you. Every Sunday, I've tried to get different topics and things that are cutting edge. I do it because why? Because we love you. I'll see you next week. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com.